Welcome back to the Farm Cook Kitchen. Today, we're going to be making a keto, low-carb version of basic beef stroganoff. Let's cook. So what goes into beef stroganoff? In this case, I'm going to try my best to decrease the carbs as much as possible. So we're going to use some, uh, first of all, ground beef, because that's what I have available. Some onion, some mushroom, some garlic. We've got everything laid out here. We've got some uh, heavy whipping cream, some Worcester sauce, some thyme, and some beef stock. And that's going to form the base, will actually form the entirety of the meal. So let's go. So what we're doing right now, just getting the pan ready, melting some butter, and after that, in go the mushrooms. So mushrooms are in the pan. We're just getting this going and it's going to take a couple of minutes for the mushrooms to start to break down, release their water, start to really get some flavor and some color. And uh, we're going to add the mushrooms or sorry, we're going to add the onions after that. Question for the group. Has anybody ever heard of cooking the mushrooms initially in just a little bit of water? I'm sure I've seen some videos online talking about breaking down mushrooms initially just using water and then allowing the mushrooms to release their water into the pan more rapidly and facilitating the browning, the Maillard reaction, um, just by using water. I've seen it. I've only tried it a couple of times. I'm not sure it makes a huge difference, but... Tell me what you think. I decided to play it safe this time. Since I'm recording this, just use some butter. I know it works. I know it's gonna be delicious. And what could be better than sauteed mushrooms in some butter? Mm -mm. All right, the pan was looking a little bit dry with just the amount of butter that I put in, probably two tablespoons. So I added a little bit more because it was looking a little dry. And now things are starting to bubble and sizzle. By the way, this pan is on pretty high. Um, this is a uh, pretty high output burner. So it's cooking quickly. I think it's time for the diced onions. Now the smell of sauteing mushrooms and onions and butter, man, there's not much better than that. This is good stuff. And by the way, the butter that I was using was salted butter. So I haven't added any additional seasoning. It's just the butter, mushrooms, and the onions. And I'm gonna cook this down for a little bit, continue the breakdown of the mushrooms, let the onions caramelize a little bit, and start to build the base of flavor for this stroganoff. All right, here we are after a couple of minutes of just sauteing, just making sure everything's moving around. It's starting to look really good. I think it's time to add the garlic. That's two pretty good sized cloves of garlic that are uh, minced. And I'm just gonna move those guys around a little bit. Make sure it gets sort of evenly distributed throughout the mix. Man, again, smell of onions, garlic, and mushrooms is pretty amazing. Yum, yum, yum. So what I think I'm gonna do right now is take this mix off the fire, put it into a separate pan or a separate pot, and then do the ground beef. All right, so the mushrooms, onions, and garlic are over on the side. Got the ground beef ready to go. I just uh, emptied out the contents of the pan. I didn't wash it or anything, didn't do anything to deglaze it. I just uh, am gonna be adding the ground beef now and here hitting the pan and starting to sizzle. I'm just gonna break this down into small chunks and get it most of the way there, brown and delicious. And then we'll start adding the rest of the ingredients 
for this keto-ish, low-carb-ish. We're about two minutes into the process of breaking up and starting to brown the ground beef. Again, the burner's on high. And it's doing a, making very quick work of this ground beef. Now, I didn't add anything to the pan because this is 80-20 ground beef, which means, gosh, about five ounces of that approximately 24 total ounces is fat, and there's probably a little bit of water in there as well. So I didn't, didn't need to add any butter or any other, um, anything else to the, to the pan. This is just all that's rendering out from the, from the ground beef. And we're gonna take a moment, once it starts to break down a little bit more, to drain off the fat. We don't want that. I mean, we do want fat, but we don't want this kind of fat, or at least not right now. I mean, this is the way I do it. If you like it, do it yourself. Keep it in there. It's all good. And this is smelling good. A little bit of the mushroom and onion and garlic that's Left over in the pan is sort of getting brought up by the liquid that's been released from this ground beef. And it's smelling fabulous. And there are little bits of uh, onion that are uh, still hanging on to the edges of the pan. Those are getting extra, extra love, extra attention. So this is coming along very nicely. In fact, I'm going to turn down the heat a bit. We don't need it to be ripping right now. We'll save that for a little bit when we're trying to reduce the uh, the heavy cream that's been added and get the liquid to uh, to concentrate a bit more, but that's coming up. Okay, the fat has been drained off. The ground beef is going back in the pan. Now we mix in the onions, the mushrooms, the garlic. We'll get all that good stuff in there. Mix this around, get everything incorporated. Awesome, smelling yummy. Now, the uh, I'm not sure about what your experience is, but when I think about beef stroganoff, the flavors that come to mind initially, or the seasonings that come to mind initially, are thyme and Worcester sauce. That's on deck. I think we're gonna first, well, let's add the Worcester sauce first. And get that mixed in. That was about um, a tablespoon and a half of Worcester sauce. That little uh, beef stock. I've got um, almost two cups here. I'm not sure we're going to need it all. About a cup and a half in, and we're going to let this simmer for a bit, let the beef sort of continue to break down after it got browned and flavor that sauce, or that sauce to be, it's not quite a sauce yet. So in addition to the flavor of Worcester sauce and, uh, uh, and thyme, there's also like huge texture components when I think of stroganoff, that creamy, delicious sauce that goes along with the beef and the mushrooms and the onions. Oh my goodness. Um, and the way that you get that without, um, without adding flour, because the traditional recipe calls for basically making um, a, a, a quick roux, basically adding flour and then cream uh, to thicken up the sauce. We're gonna, still gonna add cream, but we're not gonna add any flour and just let it cook. That's about a cup and a half of heavy whipping cream. We're just gonna let this go for a bit, reduce, come together, and we'll see what happens. I think it's gonna be pretty tasty. What do you think?
Oh, and spoiler alert, these will not be served over noodles. The way I enjoy the uh, um, keto version, low carb version of beef stroganoff, just as beef stroganoff in a bowl with a lot of sour cream added. But again, that's just what I do. You do you. So here we are. It's a couple of minutes later. I've just been doing a little bit of cleanup while you guys have been hanging out or while these guys have been hanging out. And you can see it's getting super bubbly. It's exactly what we want. We want this big pan with this huge amount of surface area, lots of heat underneath to cause that boiling reaction and to cause that sauce to thicken and reduce. That's what we're looking for. It's gonna have this wonderful, um, unctuous feeling. Unctuous isn't right, that sounds sweet. It's gotta have some really awesome mouth feel because of all the fat from the heavy whipping cream and from the sour cream that we're going to add later. Oh my goodness. It's already starting to thicken up nicely. And I think it is time for the time to go in. We've got about, I don't know, tablespoon and a half, quarter, I don't know. Um, one of the things I like to do with thyme is before using it, actually sort of mash it up a little bit. Um, this is dry thyme. Uh, and so in order to release the oils, I think it's helpful to squish it a little bit, to rub it around, to agitate it, to release some of those oils so those oils go into your dish. And it makes a great aftershave as well. So right now, I gotta say, I'm smelling pretty fabulous. I'm gonna let this go for, uh, I don't know, a little bit. Let me, uh, let me add a little seasoning. I haven't added any, any seasoning yet. Let's add some salt, a little pepper, a fair amount of pepper. and let it reduce. This is coming together nicely. That smell of the onions, the garlic, the mushrooms, and now the Worcester sauce and the thyme. Oh man, is this fragrant. It's smelling good. I think we're getting close. It's, actually, it's almost time for the sour cream. So, I think it's time for testing. Is this what was expected? Not super thick, not super creamy yet. No, but wait till you add a little bit of that sour cream. That is good. I think the seasoning is, is spot on. Have to readjust. Well, maybe you have to readjust after adding the sour cream. But just a suggestion. If you're getting sour cream and you don't use it super regularly, get this stuff. This little squeezy bottle uh, doesn't allow air to get into um, the package very easily, which means it stays fresh much longer. I hate going to the sour cream container after not seeing it for like several weeks and then you open it up and it's moldy or nasty smelling. So how much sour cream are we using? I don't know, as you can tell, I'm not measuring, but it's a fair amount. Why? Well, I think that's one of the benefits of doing um, this kind of eating, which is um, keto-ish, low carb-ish. Um, I, uh, I don't know that I truly enjoyed sour cream a whole lot before uh, starting um, eating this way um, five, six years ago. Uh, and I'm not sure I had very much sour cream before that. Um, sort of a revelation for me. So I would guess it's probably three quarters of a cup, maybe a, maybe a cup. Um, anyway, um, sour cream is delightful. And a really nice way to add fat to whatever dish you're having. And by the way, the heat is off right now, so I'm not too worried about curdling um, the sour cream. 
trying to get it incorporated quickly so it does not curdle. Um, but sour cream is one of those things that's been a revelation for me uh, I'm following a uh, sort of a low carb keto kind of lifestyle. Um, it is just lovely. Making sure everybody's getting low, everybody's getting saucy, feeling good, getting integrated. And one of the other wonderful things about this dish is that it sits, the longer it sits, the better it tastes. Meaning um, it'll taste really yummy right now, but tomorrow the flavors will marry overnight and they'll actually get a little bit better. That's pretty darn good. That is very good. But unfortunately, I think I need a little bit more sour cream, so I'll be right back. What was that, another half cup maybe? Approximately. Let's get that incorporated. See what that looks like once we're uh, fully mixed in. So um, this is uh, this is one of these dishes that I will make probably a double batch size of this every I don't know six months or so, and I'll eat it for a while, enjoy the heck out of it, share it with some friends, and and then say all right I'm good for a while. It's not a weekly kind of a thing. It's not a even a monthly kind of a dish. It's a I get a craving for it every so often. And when that happens, you have to make it. And my, uh, <laughs> my mom mentioned it um, when I was chatting with her the other day. My 88-year-old mother mentioned it when I was chatting with her the other day. She mentioned uh, making beef stroganoff and I thought, oh, awesome, it's time. Got a couple of mushrooms in here, let's give it a shot. Mmm, 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 mmm. That is delicious. So that's how you make beef, beef stroganoff. When I had everything prepped and ready to go, total time to cook this, it's about 30 minutes. So it doesn't take long, but it's something that you can put together, um, enjoy it for the family, make it low carb for you uh, or keto for you if that's the way that you eat. And if your family is not eating low carb, great, break out the noodles, put that over top, everybody can enjoy. Delicious, give it a shot, thanks. By the way, for those of you that are into doing meal prep, this is a great solution. We've got three different um, servings of beef stroganoff here, ready to go. Just need to let it cool off and then uh, shove it into the fridge and that's three meals to go. Awesome.